Learning robotics can feel complex and daunting. You want to start with something simple. But what even is a simple robot? And at what point is it not a robot at all? Join me to explore the core concepts of robotics and build the project that I wish I had started with. The project will be a sort of magic trick with a laser pointer, but more on that later. The first challenge for an intro robotics project is selecting the components. Finding parts that all work well together, are easy to use, and fit in an acceptable budget is a constant challenge for roboticists. You may expect a starter kit to solve this issue, but they often prioritize low cost over ease of use. For this project, we need a distance sensor, and the $1 sensor from the starter kit will cause too much trouble. Instead, we'll opt for this $15 sensor, which returns data as a simple analog voltage. For the microcontroller, the Arduino Uno is extremely popular and has great support and documentation. We'll also need a servo. Any low-cost servo should be fine, as long as it's not a continuous rotation servo. Finally, we'll need a laser diode. If you have a laser pointer that can stay on without touching it, that works fine. I used a 5 volt laser diode which we can power through the Arduino. Now that we have our hardware, the first step is to test each component individually. The laser diode just needs to turn on when we give it 5 volts. Check. Next up is the servo. The Arduino servo library has an example called sweep, which just turns the servo back and forth. I couldn't find my Arduino Uno, so I'm using an ESP32 variant, which made this whole thing more complicated than it needed to be. This is why we start with the most popular hardware. There are links in the description to Arduino's excellent documentation, including how to set up this coding environment. To connect the servo, we can connect the red wire to 5 volts, the black wire to ground, and the white or yellow signal wire to pin 9 on the Arduino. If we were using a larger servo, we would want the separate power supply shown on Arduino's documentation. But for this small servo, with no real load, that's not necessary. And now we have a working servo. Moving on to the distance sensor. Because we opted for the nicer sensor, this signal just comes in as an analog input. Like the servo, this needs the red wire connected to 5 volts, the black wire connected to ground, and the white signal wire will go to analog input A0. For this test code, we can use the first example under basics, analog read serial. This will read the value on the input pin and write that value over serial, which you can see from the Arduino IDE. After uploading that to the board, we'll need to open the serial monitor and make sure that the baud rate is set to 9600 to match the example code. Now you should see values between 0 and 1024, depending on the distance reading from the sensor. Let's pause here to discuss what makes this a good introductory project. A robot, according to some definitions, is a machine that can sense, think, and act. Computers can think, thermometers can sense, and remote control cars can act, but it's not a robot until you put all three together. The components we've chosen for this project highlight these three aspects. Our distance sensor senses, the Arduino thinks, and the servo can act. Oh, and robots should be cool. That's what the laser is for. In my opinion, this is the simplest set of components that you can use to make a robot. So what are we actually doing with these components? We're going to make the laser feel like it's coming from the distance sensor instead of from the laser pointer. When you see a laser dot on your hand, it's hard to tell where it's coming from. But if you move your hand, 
you can quickly find your way back to the source. But if the laser were to carefully track your hand as it moves, it could direct you to somewhere else entirely. In this case, towards the distance sensor. To do this, we need to mount the laser to the servo, and then mount the servo about 8 to 12 inches to the side of the distance sensor. The sensor will tell us how far away the nearest object is along this line, and then we can do some math to angle the laser pointer so the laser hits that object directly in front of the distance sensor. Doing that calculation continuously as the object moves will give us the illusion we're looking for. So how do we know what angle to send to the servo? Well, if we know the distance between the servo and the sensor, and we know the distance from the sensor to the object, we can use trigonometry to find this angle of the triangle. You will need to measure this distance yourself, since your physical system will be different from mine. If our sensor readings were in inches, and our servo angle were aligned with the angle we're trying to set, we would be all done. But neither of those are true we need to do some calculations to turn the analog values from the sensor into actual distances. We'll also need to do something to convert our desired laser angle into the angle for the servo. Both of these operations are called calibrations. For the distance sensor, there are a couple of options. We could put objects at a number of distances in front of the sensor, check the sensor readings, and then create a lookup table to find our best guess at the distance for any given sensor reading. This is actually a pretty common strategy, but if we look at the data sheet for this sensor, we can see that they already have some data. Remember, a reading of 1024 is the same as 5 volts, so you can convert the voltages on this graph to sensor readings. You can also see that this won't work if you get too close to the sensor. Based on this data, you can use a linear fit, quadratic fit, or a 1 over x fit curve. I'll leave that actual implementation up to you, but this should get you moving in the right direction. For the servo, output values should map linearly to the servo angle, so you should be able to set up a y equals mx plus b style equation to do all the calibration that you need. An input angle of 0 should correspond to pointing directly at the sensor, and an angle of 90 should correspond to pointing parallel with the sensing direction. Here is my final code structure. You can see I used the 1 over x style fitting for the distance sensor, and a linear equation for the servo. It took a bit of fiddling to find appropriate values for those equations, but I landed on something I'm pretty happy with. You can see with the system off, it's pretty easy to find your way back to the laser pointer, but with the system on, the laser acts like it's coming from the sensor. It's a bit easier to see on camera if I point the system at the wall and slide it back and forth. Here is what happens with the system off. and this is with the system turned on. The motion is a bit jittery, but it still manages to trick you when you move your hand in front of it. You'll have to build one yourself to try it out. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and if you give this project a try, let me know how it goes in the comments.